Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over how to create a very similar animation to this, and I'll go ahead and play it back for you. This is going to be completely off the cuff, non-edited. Um, we're going to do a simple kind of card deck shuffle stack animation. You can call it whatever you want. Um, it's actually pretty simple to create. I'm going to try to keep this under 10 minutes if I can. I'm going to show you where I got the images, how to create the image texture, how to create this awesome array modifier that we're going to be utilizing and how to create this exact animation, more or less. It's not going to turn out exactly like this, but I will be posting this on Gumroad as well. So if you guys want to grab the file, you should be able to do that. All right, here we go. First things first, let's go ahead and open up a new Blender file as usual. I'm going to zoom out. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll just start by deleting everything. I usually do that. Um, I should probably just make that my default file anyway. Um, now in Chrome here, I have my actual image that I found online. This is the original image right here. I'll try to link it if I remember. And basically what I did is I just cut off the one side that I wanted. So I cropped it and I saved it as a PNG with uh, transparency so that I can get these rounded corners in here. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is go to add image, image as planes. And then of course you're gonna wanna locate your image which is located in my downloads. I'm going to import that and you'll see that it is right here. Now, remember guys, that you're not gonna be able to see anything if we're not in material preview. So I'm gonna to switch to material preview. And as you can see, we have our card. Now, one of the things that I need to do first is I'm gonna to need to actually um, add the solidify modifier. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. I'm gonna add the solidify modifier. I still hate what they did with the menu over here, but whatever, I'm gonna add solidify. And I'm gonna to go to the side view so I can see how thick my card looks. I think last time I used a value of 0 0.005. I think that worked out pretty well. That looked semi-realistic. Maybe I'll go 0 0.003. You guys can experiment with this value. After, uh, before you apply that, tab into edit mode, subdivide a couple times because we're gonna be adding some modifiers to this. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. And now I have my card. Now on the other side, if you want to, you can add the actual face of the card. That's totally up to you guys. I'm gonna keep it as such. All right, next thing we need to do is I'm gonna go ahead and generate an array. Now, instead of going to the side, left and right, we're actually gonna use the Z axis. So I'm gonna do a negative one value and I'm gonna hold shift and move that down. And in order to see this properly, I'm gonna stay in solid view. So what we wanna do is we wanna find how we want this stack to end and how we want it to start. For me, I want it to start spiraled out and I want it to restack itself. Before we can do that, I wanna find a good starting point. Now, how many um, cards do I want? I'll just type in 52 and there is my deck. Now, one thing to consider, and I'll go ahead and give this a quick save as a bunch of random letters. Tell me if you do the same in the comments below. I'm gonna quickly hide my array modifier and I'm actually going to round my corners. So what I'm gonna do is in edit mode, I'm actually gonna select each corner. I'm gonna hold shift to select each edge and then I'm gonna bevel them in material preview so that I can actually match them up with the face of the card. All right, so I have all my edges selected. I'm gonna go into material preview. I'm gonna to go to my top down view, control B to bevel. And you can see I'm beveling the edges right now. Hopefully my live streamers can see that. I'm gonna to scroll to actually add more segments. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna confirm that, tab out of edit mode. And now I have those nice rounded corners. Now it might not look good right now because we're in material preview, but that's how you would add the rounded corners after you've added the image texture. Now, before we continue, because I know you guys are probably wondering how to get those little details on your card, I'm gonna zoom into this on our shading tab. I am going to take our image node and duplicate it. I am going to add a bump node right here, plug the bump into the normal, and then plug my color into the height. We'll give that a quick second and you can see that that has already taken place. Now, in order to really see this bump, I'm gonna go into render view, add my environment texture, and I think I'll just add this random environment texture. You can see right now, this doesn't look very good. And the reason why is because the strength is way too high. So I'm gonna knock it down to about, I would say 0.25 looks pretty good. And what's really nice is if you know you have a glossy card, you can actually lower the roughness as well. For me, I actually don't mind the roughness being at 0.5. I think it's a good value. Now, again, we have a high quality image texture. We have a bump node set up, and this actually looks pretty good so far. Now let's go ahead and start animating things. So we have our card, we have our shader set up. You guys can add a shader to the back by assigning a new material. I'm not going to do that. So right now we have our array modifier. So we have our stack. 
we go back to solid mode. So we have our stack. Now these are all really close together. So if it looks glitchy, don't be worried. That's totally normal. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add an empty. And you can see we have our empty right here. And we're gonna use that empty to spiral our cards. So I'm gonna click on our cards, go to um, object offset. I'm gonna use my eyedropper tool to select the empty. And then watch what happens when I take my empty and I start rotating it. We can actually spiral the cards in any manner that we want to. And this is a really cool feature that you guys have probably seen some tutorials for. So that's why I'm trying to go over this. Um, one of the first things I'm gonna do, you can see my Z axis is at zero. This is where I want it to end, but I actually want it to start kind of like this, maybe 2.5 degrees. So I'm gonna hover over this rotation, hit I to insert my keyframe, but I'm also gonna click on my deck of cards and I'm going to keep in mind this end value. I want it to end at frame 60, so I'm gonna actually insert a keyframe with this value at 160. I'm gonna go back to frame one and I'm gonna set this value to something lower, like maybe something like that. So negative 12 will do it. I'll insert a keyframe. And now here's what we have so far. Remember, we didn't keyframe the empty yet. All we have is this, okay? So we just have our array modifier squeezing these back together. What we have to do is go to frame 60 with our empty selected, reset the rotation to zero, insert a keyframe. And now when we back up, and I'll go into rendered mode so you can see this, when we back up and we play, you can see that the, um, the deck of cards will restack itself. And that's because we've reset the rotation of the empty and we've reset the value of the array. Okay, now we have our array and we have our empty. Now what's really cool about this is you can customize this to your liking. What I like to do is I like to highlight my keyframes and use the interpolation mode called back. I just think it looks cool. Just be careful with what you apply this to. Sometimes when you use the so like right here, it wouldn't work because now we have our cards getting compressed beyond what they should be. So be careful what you apply that interpolation mode to. All right, I'm gonna set up the camera in just a moment, but before we do that, I wanna mention something about empties. Right now, we currently have one empty. I actually wanna contain my entire animation in, um, in one empty beyond this one. So I'm gonna add a box to contain everything. So I'm gonna go to add empty cube, and then I'm going to highlight these two things in the middle, control P to parent, and then click object. And now what happens is we have this cube, which we can animate as these are animated. Now it also makes sense in a second. Right here, frame 60, I'm gonna click on insert, location and rotation. I'm gonna move back to frame one, and let's just give this just some random rotation and maybe move it down. Now watch what happens. We still have all of our animation, but now we can animate our cube however we want. Even beyond frame 60, I can go to frame 120 and we can just give it some rotation, maybe rotate it like this, okay? And then I'll just give these interpolation mode of Bezier. So now we have something that looks like this, okay? And you can do whatever you want with this. It's totally up to you. All right, let's set up our scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a mesh plane and this is gonna be our background. This doesn't have to be more than a principal BSDF. So I'll just give it a new shader. I'll make it base color of white and I'll keep the roughness pretty high. Next thing we're gonna do is add in our camera. Okay, we have our camera right here. I'm gonna place our camera up here. I'm gonna pop into my camera view and I'm gonna give myself a 100 millimeter lens. And the reason I wanna do that is because I wanna get nice and close to my subject. Um, the lighting here is not looking very good. So I'm gonna have to find a different angle for my um, camera. I think I'll put it over here on the other side and we'll see what the, the lighting looks there. Let's see what this looks like. And I wanna angle this down. Um, ideally, I wanna see what this stack is gonna look like when it's separated. I'm gonna move the floor down and scale it up. Let's see what we have so far. This is better lighting because I'm gonna add my own area light anyway. All right, one of the things I wanna do is I wanna separate these cards even more. So I'm gonna actually adjust our original keyframe and I'm gonna adjust our original empty. I'm also going to have that actually be even more rotated, something like that, a little bit more exaggerated. Now I'm gonna go back to my camera, add depth of field. I'm going to manually control the depth of field. So right now we are at a distance of 10 millimeters, or sorry, 10 meters. I'm gonna lower that 
and I'm going to lower my f-stop to 0.2. And you can see right away, we can start to see where our focal point is going to be. I'm going to raise my f-stop up to 0.1, and then I'm going to change my lens to 110. This looks good so far. We have some intensity of depth of field, but I'm going to make it even more intense. I'm going to bring my f-stop down to 0.5. This looks good so far. Let's add in our area light. I'm going to go to add area light, click on area light, and actually that looks pretty cool, but I'm going to scale this up even more. I'm going to make the power 500, and now I'm going to put this behind my scene. Now to do this, I'm going to actually go to my split view, and I have my rendered view on the left, and on the right, I'm going to have my um, just my regular viewport view. And the reason I like to do this is so that I can easily experiment with the lighting very quickly and see my updates in real time from a different perspective. And I actually don't mind how that looks. I might keep that. So notice how the lighting can dramatically change. Let me go ahead and turn this light source off before, after. A dramatic difference. Um, and I know this is very simple, guys. This is just an area light. But a lot of people do not mess with lighting a lot. And I don't know why, because it can make or break your render. So this isn't me yelling at you or preaching, but I will say, spend a little bit of extra time on your lighting. It'll make the difference. So right now we have our animation. I'm gonna cut it down to 120 in our frame range. So if I play it back, it won't play on a loop, but it will play continuously over and over again. So here's what we have so far. Now, this isn't too crazy of an animation, but you can probably see how powerful the array modifier is when we use it in a certain way, in whatever way we like. And even if you don't decide to do an animation with the array modifier, we still have some pretty incredible results in really no time at all. And I just wanna show you guys something. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. I'm gonna give myself a lens size that isn't typical, 130 millimeters. But look what happens as I zoom in here. You can really see the fine detail in our render. And it looks really good with not that much effort. I don't even know how long I've been recording, but when I upload this to YouTube, I bet you, I bet you I'm still under, I've got to be under 15 minutes. Um, all right, let's go into some render settings. One of the things I like to do before I render is turn off my overlays so I can get a preview of how things are going to look. I think this looks fantastic. I think it looks professional. Um, and I really haven't even gone into details that I could. I could make this an hour long tutorial and give you a hyper realistic version of this card but I just think this looks fine. This is doable. And it's at least a, a starting point for you guys. I'm gonna try to keep my tutorials a little shorter anyway. All right, render settings. Um, light paths, I typically keep these at like 20 each. Might seem like pretty excessive, but it always results in a great render. Denoising, we're gonna go with optics, max samples. Here's where I'm gonna blow your mind. 50, 50 max samples. Um, dimensions 1920 by 1920. Let's go ahead and hit render and see how long our render takes. And our render should take less than 15 seconds. Let's go ahead and see. Right now we have a, a render time of 7.36 seconds and it looks fantastic. Now, one other thing I'm going to mention, and I know you guys know what lens distortion is, I'm going to add in the compositor our lens distortion node so that we can get those sort of um, vibrant edges. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Go to your compositor, click on use nodes, separate these two nodes apart like this, shift A and search for lens distortion. Go ahead and pop that in there and then search for viewer so that we can see our result. All right, so right now our lens distortion is set to zero. I'm gonna go with 0.1 because I want you to see what that does. Now look at the edges. You guys see those edges? We get that kind of lens distortion that you would normally get on a typical real life camera lens. I'm gonna go a little lower. It adds a little touch of realism, and I think that looks pretty good. Now, let me go ahead and double my render size with 200% on the right here, and let's go ahead and render this, and let's see how, quote unquote, realistic it looks. Now, I'm not saying this is the most realistic render that you'll ever get, but the level of detail that you can create in Blender if you bump up your values and you just wait a little bit longer. So this should take less than 30 seconds. But for 30 seconds, I mean, I have an incredible GPU. For 30 seconds, one frame, this is going to look fantastic. Almost 